Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is the CZ Scorpion Evo 3 S1 in 2.2 rimfire. You can ease the pressure on the magazine follower just by squeezing that button down there, which makes it a lot easier to load. The magazines are very reliable, I've not had any problems with them at all. The magazines are super easy. The release control is ambidextrous for your index finger and it just pops in. And then when I want to go, all I have to do is literally Grip it, rip it. And it really is that quick to use. As you can see, the stock folds. There's a small magnet on here and a steel inlay there. So when it does fold, it clicks in position, stays shut like that. When it's opened out, there's a locking latch here, which allows you to just click it in position but you do need to remember that the recoil pad needs to be if you extend it when you fold it it doesn't actually align so it will only lock shut when it's collapsed like that but at that stage it's really easy to handle and carry around once you want to use it it's literally a case of just this open it out and you're ready to go straight away The cocking handle locks back, so you can actually open it and lock it back there, but there's different ways of using the gun. With the magazine in, it will actually hold open on the last round, and if you need to unlatch the bolt, you just pull the lever down on the side here. But this means you've got so much usability, and the gun is actually very fast to operate. And if you do want to open it and hold it open, it's a one-handed job. You're not having to fight with it because everything happens on that cocking handle. And that cocking handle is actually reversible to the right side of the gun too. I absolutely love the iron sights on this rifle. We've got the single post at the front which is elevation adjustable and the back is windage adjustable. But there are four apertures here and you can choose between them because they just rotate by your fingertip like that. So if you want to use the small aperture for the most precision, there you go or you can flick it the opposite way and go to one of the larger apertures to make the, fast, the sight faster and easier to align. Most importantly, the circular appearance you get close in on this sight from the back lines up perfectly with the radius at the front 
and I found this the most intuitive, fast, easy to use and accurate iron sight I've ever got my hands on. Okay, you've seen the rifle in use. This has been, quite simply, a very enjoyable review project because the rifle is utterly simple to use. Um, you'll have seen two magazines with it. The barrel overall length is 416 millimeters, which is 16 inches. It's threaded half inch by 28 TPI, which is UNEF, and that's for a moderator or muzzle brake. It comes with the muzzle brake. Do you need it? There's no recoil, um, it's nice looking, but you'll have seen I used it with the brake on it or with the moderator on it. You'll have also seen I used it with M-Lock attached and I put a Picatinny bipod on, or a Picatinny piece of M-Lock attachable uh, rail. Um, what else did I use it with? Well, I used it with the iron sights that are on it. They're not made of iron, they're actually polymer, but iron sights is the name for them. And I also used it with the 1.6 rifle scope for a bit of additional fun too. I'll be honest, I loved it with either. These are some of the best iron sights I think I've ever used, and I love the fact you can change this aperture at the back to give you the perfect sight picture you want, and it matches the radius of this sight at the front too. Now, it's both windage and elevation adjustable. It comes set at 25 meters, but I think it's about speed, it's about fun. It is so nice to shoot like that because it's so fast and intuitive. I did do the group shooting with a little one to six scope on it. Let me just stop that moderator rolling away. I did do the group shooting with the one to six scope on it, and I restricted them mainly to five round groups because I was too busy wasting ammunition plinking with it, shooting steel at speed from multiple positions. You'll have seen I probably use the Sublime to the Ridiculous in terms of ammunition. The best groups were with the SK Match ammo. Those paper groups were all shot at 50 metres. The steel, actually, the steel deer was at 100 metres. But I really specifically wanted to test this gun. With it being a semi-auto, it's pretty quiet, put a moderator on it. I wanted to test it with the RWS subsonic because that is notably the slowest subsonic 2.2 LR ammunition I think I've ever used on pretty much any rifle platform. It's always a bit slower. It's very quiet because of that. And here's the critical thing. Would that very inherently low recoil ammunition on a blowback bolt system work smoothly? And do you know what? I have not had, hand on heart, a single misfire, misfeed, miscycling, nothing in probably four to five hundred rounds with this rifle over two days I was shooting it. It is thoroughly reliable. Now, one of the critical things I think helped with this is that the bolt itself is quite light. And it's also got a very large um, opening here in which you've got the um, ejection to take place. Now it comes with two magazines. These fit in the polymer frame. This is all um, short fibre reinforced polymer and those fit in really quickly and easily. You've got a nice sort of tapered inlet there to get a fast change over and because it's ambidextrous in terms of the mag release. You've seen this on video. I didn't struggle with it. But critically, this ejection area here is massive. So you've got loads of space for that blast, that brass to come flying out without tumbling or snagging anything and, and rumbling down and landing back on its own magazine system. So 
it looks quite like a military rifle for a larger chambering, which is good because of that, but it does have a great functional uh, benefit because of that, because it just didn't jam. The magazines are easy to load, they're easy to use, you can see it on the video, you can pull those down and just make it a little bit easier, don't drop them all in, but to be fair, again, I just didn't have any problems with it. The polymer M lock is quite warm to hold. You don't, you know, it doesn't draw the heat out of your hands. Um, you've got plenty of space there on the fore end to get a good grasp on it without, you know, touching the barrel or anything. Barrel's quite slim in diameter. In fact, I didn't check what it was. I'm going to guesstimate it's about 16 millimeters. And do you know what? We can assume that because the battery's dead in there. But it is, yes, it's 16 millimeters. So. How much more barrel do you need for two to rimfire? See, it's a barrel called Hammer Forged. It's a six groove barrel. I think it's got to turn every 16 inches on it to give you the stability, but that's pretty common for a two to rimfire. That's going to work great with 30 to 40 grain lead projectiles. I did use some high velocity copper wash projectiles, which are 32 grains. Those are Aguila ones, and they're pretty quick. They were over, they were nearly 1500 feet per second, which is a little bit down from the suggested box velocity. And in fairness, all the ammunition was probably a little bit lower than box velocity, but um, it's a slightly shorter barrel at 16 inches. But I don't think it was any kind of any kind of detriment for that. And the gun is very light and pointable. I'm just going to clear, clear myself a little bit of space here now because. I also want to show you the disassembly of the gun to show you how easy it is to clean. Now, it tells you all about this. You get the instruction manual with it, gives you all the details about how to do it. But essentially, you've got to do this, and I've got to hope this works on camera. So, you cock the rifle, lock the bolt open. I love this fact that you can just lock the bolt by flicking that handle up with one hand. You can swap that to the right side as well, by the way, with a little bit more disassembly. But you cock that, make sure it's set to fire, and then you push through the pin here, which is what goes through there. You can just snag that from the other side. It tells you to push forward on it slightly, which just eases the pressure on that pin. It allows it to disengage a little bit more easily. So pull that out there, and then, fingers crossed, you pull the magazine, sorry, the magazine and trigger assembly forwards and down. So because this has got the whole trigger assembly in here, you can blast that out with any chemicals you want, blast it out with compressed air. Um, yes, you get firing residue, but I mean that's the that's the sign of a 2-2 two -two rim fire. You're always going to get firing residue, both lubricant and um, small shavings of, uh, of copper, etc. But that's a fact of life with a 2-2 two -two rim fire. It's quite a dirty cartridge. But that, how easy was that to take out of there? Now, we can also remove the bolt. So the bolt, you know, I've got to just push it back, lift it ever so slightly, and that will come out there with its um, return spring on the actual guide rail. So that's the bolt. Um, I haven't weighed that, but it's, it's fairly light and it's not sort of the big clunky thing. And this is obviously a lot easier to take apart than sort of a Ruger 1022 or something like that. CZ have made an awful lot of military rifles of all sorts and they know what they're doing and it's hard to say that this isn't based somewhat visually on some of their, uh, their more military offerings. And now, I need to put this together. You can see on the bolt here we've got a single extractor claw there and uh, okay you've got a bit of residue on here from the, from the dirt of the cartridge, the firing residue, but Look at all that space you've got, and it's not packing and you know packing little bits of wax or or residue from the bullets and, and and jamming the rifle because of that. This is 450, 500 rounds. It has not been cleaned. I only learned how to take it apart about 20 minutes ago just for the video. So essentially that's that, and I need to remember now which way up that little carrier goes there. Um, Right, it's in correctly now. So, like anything, just takes a couple of goes just to get it right, and then the trigger mechanism goes back in like that, pushes into position, and then that pin drops back through there to lock it all in place. And that should now, this is a safe dry fire, click, off it goes.
just to talk a little bit more about some of the controls. The magazine actually has last round hold open capability. So when that comes back, it will automatically hold open. I do love the fact that even if, if you're not using that sort of um, system, you can just pull that bolt handle back, flick the lever up, and the gun is locked open. And that makes it so much quicker and easier to make safe than you know any kind of side button on an AR-15 type rifle or you know on a Ruger 1022 where you've got to mess about with the bolt lock back, which is a funny little pin. That is just so simple to do, and of course when you're ready to fire, flick it down and off it goes. But um, it really is just simple and intuitive to use, and I couldn't really say there's a specific way you have to use it because it's versatile. The magazine release, as I said, is ambidextrous. You just push your index finger forward there. I can do that either way around, depending which way I'm going to be shooting. Um, it's a little bit less controlled left-handed, just because I'm not left-handed and done it for, but that was as, as long as it took me to do it. The safety catch is also ambidextrous, right side, left side. So if I just drop that magazine out, and let that ready to go fire. That's actually in the fire position there. But if I was to do it, that's safe and it blocks the trigger. While we've got the rifle cocked, I'm going to weigh the trigger mechanism. It's a single stage trigger, it has got a bit of creep, but I think in fairness, you know, this is not a match rifle. It is not a precision rim fire. It's a fast fire, fun rim fire. And that's point three thousand two hundred and four grams, which is seven pounds and one ounce. So I'll just do that one more time, just to give us a reasonable level of consistency from that. Just pulling it steadily, adding the pressure. You can see the trigger moves slightly, and off it goes. Seven pounds, seven point eight ounces, which is three thousand three hundred ninety-seven grams. Um, although that sounds heavy, again, it's a semi-automatic fun rifle. It's not a super precision, long-range, ultimate accuracy rimfire. What I will say in comparison to that, though, is it's one of the most fun rimfires I've ever shot because it is so utterly reliable. Um, I just can't knock it. I love the iron sights, love the reliability of it. Um, the AR-15 type grip is not really an AR-15 grip, but it is actually slightly adjustable for position, so you can get change reach and length of pull onto the trigger very slightly. And of course, the stock itself has got about 50 millimeters of adjustment in the length of pull here. Just to look at the stock, uh, the release catch is there. Now, if I click that open and release that down, that won't lock in position. There's a little magnetic part there, little plate there, and that will click and it will stay. But if you put that stop down, that now locks in position because of the magnets interact. Uh, on the back end, we've got a rubber recoil pad here, which is really good. There's not particularly any recoil, but it grabs into your shoulder and it holds solidly, so you've got no issue with it. And in terms of folding this rifle and you know opening it up, once you get used to it, you literally just grab the recoil pad open it comes, fingers go onto the extension, and there it is. It's done in one smooth motion. Now, I don't think anybody needs necessarily a fast access rimfire, but it does go to show how good and intuitive the controls are that CZ have developed over their military rifle ranges. Pop it open, and there we go. And it is straight to the shoulder. The alignment with the sight is just somehow perfect. It's got chamfered edges on the cheek piece here, so it fits in nicely. It goes tight under your cheekbone. It doesn't displace your jaw at all. And you can just click it straight in and line up with whichever one of those sight elements you choose. And you're looking straight down the gun straight away. Of course, all that Picatinny rail means it's not difficult to add whatever type of sights you want. Um, Yes, some people are going to complain, oh, but it's all made of polymer, it's all made of polymer. Well, you know, drop into the 21st century, polymers are where it's at. And although the rifle is quite expensive, I think one thing you have to account for is the fact that injection moulding polymers, it's not like changing a, a computerised machining programme, They're very expensive as those machines are. You can change a tolerance, you can change a dimension, and it will just do it differently. If you want to do that with an injection moulding, you need all new tooling for it, all new moulds. And tooling and moulds for something this complicated and this refined ergonomically are phenomenally expensive. CZ have to make that money back somewhere, so the rifle, yes, it does become quite expensive. But I would say it is an absolutely superb gun. I mean, I just love it. Um, <laughs> What, what would I use? I, don't, I have no use for it whatsoever because I'm not kind of a tactical shooter, a sports shooter. I'm not like a, a fast fire steel plate shooter, but it never failed to do anything I tried with it. And I can't help but love it for that. 
as I say, there's two 10 round mags with it, and the overall weight is 2.7 kilograms, which is six pounds. It's just light tactile, and even with you know the moderator added and a bipod added and a scope added, it's still short and easy to handle and stable in position when you aim because so many folding stocks can be really disappointing in use, but this one's actually very nice. The overall length with the stock open goes from 860 to 910 millimeters, but with the rifle totally folded, it's all the way down there at about 660 millimeters long. So that's like 26 inches. Conversely open, it goes from 34 out to 36. Length of pull is just over, it's about 14 and eighth inch, which is 360 millimeters near as damn it. That makes it, you know, <laughs> It's a grown-up sized rifle in that situation, and if you fold it down there, it's good for younger shooters, smaller shooters. That's at 12 and a quarter, which is 300 and 311 millimeters. And of course, although it feels like this for you or I, you know, you get one of the younger shooters, someone with a smaller frame, and that's a very, very easy to handle, fun to shoot rifle. Pop a bipod on it, you've got great support for them, and they've got easy, fast fire fun, which most importantly is very safe and easy to control. You don't need to be strong, you've not got complicated controls, it's just there. And if I just drop that mag out so that releases again, there you go. And of course, for the left hander, if necessary, you can swap that cocking lever and the ejection, as you'll see in the video, comes out quite laterally, it's not coming too far backwards and you're not getting gas escape from it either, so it's not blasting you in the eyes. M-Lock allows you to add whatever accessories you want and of course you've got the sling studs here so you can add you know, carry system on if you want and again at the back end you can add what you like to it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching that review of this rifle that has made me smile from the instant I opened the box all the way to the completion of doing the video review on it. It has been... If it's easy to review, I think that reflects on the fact it's a very easy to own rifle and I can wholeheartedly say just how much fun it is. And uh, just don't forget that because I review different rifles every day of the week. Some of them are really hard work to get the best out of to make look good on camera. This one's just fun to shoot, it's easy to do. And I just can't say fairer than that. It's actually pretty accurate at the end of the day too, thanks to the CZ barrel. You put the um, scope system on it and you're very careful control with your position, you know, lock in with a hand on the back end with it on the bipod. You can actually shoot some really good groups with it. And as I say, the groups on paper were shot at 50 meters and I did some shooting on steel at 100 meters at not particularly slow controlled fire. They were pretty much plinking shots as I would call them. And it worked really well. Right, I hope you've enjoyed that review. Please like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell, and don't forget to keep track of the regular weekly uploads. Please go through to the end of the video because there's a link to the next year's British Shooting Show 2024 in Birmingham in February, and this rifle will be on show there, I'm quite sure, on the Sportsman Gun Centre stand. So um, come along, have a look at it, and don't just judge it by the fact it's made of plastic and it's however much it is judge it for how it performs because i have to say this is the 21st century thank you for watching bye for now